Hello and welcome to the last Front End Horse Live of the Year. Happy 2021. Uh, I am so, so thrilled to be able to end it with our good friend, Anthony. Anthony, it is so great to have you on. Uh, man, how how is it going, buddy? I know you just hopped off from a different stream. You are you are in demand, my friend. How, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm really happy to be here. It's uh, an honor to get to be on the show with you. I've been watching it for a while. I've been hanging out in the Discord for a while. So I think that if you're someone who is a, a front horse regular, you've probably seen my little cartoon avatar popping around here and there. And uh, yeah, I'm just super excited to get a chance to play around with some cool GraphQL stuff with you and get to show the audience like what we're doing here at Stepsen. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And, um, and uh, yes, you've been in the Discord as far as I can remember, like I don't remember a time in the Discord without Anthony. Uh, but there, you know, I think you might have come like the first or second week or something. Oh yes, thank you, uh, Ben. I do need oh, to. Yeah, soon. we. It was probably after a, a, maybe a month or two. I mean, when did when did the Discord actually start? Hold on one second. I just got. I have to boost you. We didn't get a chance to do a t uh, sound check, so. Yeah. Um, I need to check, figure check. this out on the fly. Unfortunately, um, this card. Um, thank you for saying that, Ben. Um, ba, ba, ba. I can drop my cell. There we go. Gain. We're boosting that. All right, cool. Can you give me something, Anthony? Yes. Check, check, check. One, two. I'm going to go a little bit higher with you. Sibilis. Almost there. Check, Almost check. there. All right. Okay. Let's... Hello. Perfect. All right. That, that seems pretty good. All right. Great. Uh, chat, let me know if there's anything else that I can do. Um, that seems to I be. Can also, good project. Yes, Anthony. Use your stage voice, please. Um, cool. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate you. And also, Aaron, thank you very much. Um, so also, Step Zen, uh, which is what we're going to be getting into, was one of the five big sponsors of our holiday show that we did on Friday, which helped r raise uh, $10,000 for Team Seas and removed 10,000 pounds of trash from the ocean. So thank you uh, to you and to Step Zen for uh, sponsoring that. I really appreciate you guys coming through for that. Um, yeah, yeah just, definitely. It, it happy, happy to lot. do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, you've you've been around for a bit. Step Zen is now like you know a, an integral part to the front end horse stream and the front end horse community. Um, let's get into it. Uh, first off, what is Step Zen? What yeah, what are we absolutely. even going to be so, doing today? Yeah, the this it's a hard to give a succinct definition of what Step Zen is without using a couple terms you need to define. So I would call okay. it a GraphQL API gateway. And so the first thing there is that an API gateway is something that kind of sits between different services. So if you want to say like talk to a database, you will usually do it through like an API gateway is a very common thing. Like the AWS has a service literally called API gateway. Right. And but that's usually a REST API. And so okay. REST API has its will have its own kind of bespoke way of taking resources and doing mutations and stuff like that. Whereas GraphQL is a standardized query language for APIs itself. So explaining steps and requires explaining GraphQL also, but um, I would guess like you, I know you have a little bit of GraphQL experience from doing Gatsby. And yep. I think that's probably where front end heavy people will kind of have seen that the most, but the cool thing about GraphQL is it's actually like a very simple, concise language where you just write either the word query or the word mutation, and then you name it, and then you kind of specify like what the query is and what you want back from it. And so we're going to be, everything we're going to be doing today is going to be GraphQL. And then there'll be certain things that are kind of specific to StepZen because StepZen, the point of StepZen is to take different kinds of backends and turn it into a GraphQL API. So whether that is a REST API or a database or even another GraphQL API, because it also will stitch it together into a single graph for you. So if you've ever used Apollo, you may have had this issue where you had to figure out how to get a bunch of different data sources together and then write resolvers that will move throughout different pieces of that backend to find the right pieces of data and then stitch them all back together into a single object you can query. Whereas with StepZen, it does that for you automatically. You just write a bunch of schemas and then you can query it. And so what we're going to do is at the end, we're going to have like one giant mega query that's going to hit like five or six backends all at once and get the whole the whole data in one go. So that's kind of like the, the high level pitch, like what is StepZen? 
Got it. So it's a, it's my one stop shop for all the data that my project needs, basically. Yep, that is the idea. And whether that backend data is living in a CMS or in a database or in just some random endpoint, some developer gave you at some point in time and said, "Here you go." <laughs> Got it. Yeah, because I mean, I I know with my projects, they might start out where it's just from, like I, I have one source of data, and like for some of my projects, you know, that, that might just be Prismic, um, or it might even be Markdown, or just you know, uh, Superbase. Like we we just did a project that n needed to fetch um, the donations from Superbase, but then as you continue to add on to that project, you need to keep piling different data sources onto it. And it starts to get kind of clunky and starts to get kind of annoying with like how like, all right, I, I need the super base data to integrate with my prismic data and all these different things. You have to like kind of handle that. So if I have a, uh, uh, a, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the exact phrase you use an API gateway. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, that can handle that and kind of, you know, manage the, the merger of that data for me. And I just have to talk to steps in and not all these like 10 different data points. Uh, that sounds like it, it sounds like what I love about Gatsby. Um, and so that's, that's, uh, you, you got me interested. I, my interest is yeah. peaked. Yeah. And so the, the yeah. term, you know, data or content mesh, data mesh, yeah. these are terms that, that come up frequently with, with Gatsby, they were calling it a content mesh. And that's a, I think a really good term for it because it's just kind of unifies it all into one kind of fabric. But um, the you also hear now the term graphical mesh being used by the guild because they have an open source project that does a similar thing to steps in, in the sense that you can take all these different backends with different languages and types and put them all together into one thing. The main difference though, is that with steps in, you're also getting a full hosted experience as well. So nice. when we're be, when we'll be building out the project, you now have an account in steps in that you created and you'll be able to run a command that will deploy your endpoint. And that actually gives you a deployed endpoint that you then could use in any front end you want. So for someone who already knows how to work with the GraphQL API, knows how to send queries to it from whatever your favorite front end framework is, you will immediately have an endpoint that you can start querying and, and working with, which is really, really cool. Great. Love it. Um, yeah. So how do we uh, how, how do we want to get started here? And yeah, so the first thing I see we'll Michael do... Chan in the chat. Great to see you, my friend. Yeah, always, always another good support. buddy. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. Um, while we start, you can clone the the steps and boilerplate that cool. I had um shared All with right. you because this is a this will be a good did way that. to show. I'm a step ahead, Anthony. I am yeah, yeah. ready. I'm here. So I I did a few things to prep for the stream just to kind of fill in chat in case you are coming here looking to uh, f follow along. Um, I cloned this down. Let me actually grab this repo for our friends. Uh, that is, is this it? No, that's not it. Let me, let me actually find that for them. Um, and then let's, uh, oh, oh, so so I cloned this down. And then what mm -hmm. I did, yes, I want to go there, um, was I installed the steps in CLI, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So those yeah, were kind so of the, the steps in only two CLI things. is what you're going to be using to actually deploy and interact with it. So it's really sweet because you just run a single command steps and start and it does pretty much everything for you. And then why don't we look at just each of the, the different uh, files we have in here. So okay. if you go to index.graphql, this is the entry point into your graph. So what we have here is we have one single file right now, which is test.graphql, and that is going to be our graph. But as we go, as we add more data sources, we're going to create new files that will be brought into. So every time we create a new file, you have to remember, go back to your index.graphql and then write in the, the new file. So that's something we're gonna do like a handful of times. Cool. But right now it's just a single file. So it's okay, a great. simple, basic project you can set up. Great. Oops. And then if you go uh, to test, to Hold on, so yep. if you give me two seconds, I want to turn that bot off if I can manage it. Yeah. Oh no, my keyboard is. Uh, let me see if I can turn that off super quick. Sorry about that. Uh, first stream since the uh, the fundraiser. Okay, it is off. Thank you for letting me do that. Super is that quick. for the the snowtacular? Yes, that that uh, that was the donate link. You can still donate, but. Yeah. I don't want to spam. Uh, I decided actually, I really like trash now. <laughs> yes. 
cool. So so sorry to cut you off. I just I just saw that yeah, pop up good. and I wanted to mm-hmm. nip that. Uh, cool. Yep. So I want to go where now? Test.graphql. Cool. And so this is our first basic GraphQL schema. So it can help us also for anyone who doesn't know um, GraphQL. We can walk through this real quick. So we're defining a test interface and it has just like some very basic uh, types. So you have a string, int, float, JSON, date, and date time. And then we have a single query and that query is called get test. And then that query returns the test interface. And what this is going to do is every steps and schema you have is going to then have a directive under the query that connects it to something. But we don't have that right now because this is just set up to return mock data just to make sure that your your GraphQL API is already up and running. So you could deploy this and you will have a full GraphQL API with mock data that you can start working with on your okay. front. This is all you need to, to get started. Got it. Cool. And then go to stepzen.config.json. This will give us a endpoint name. And so right now it's going to be API for slash stepsend dash boilerplate. So this is going to be like preceded by like stepsend.com and like my my account name. And then it's going to, so I can determine what this is called and what this looks like beyond the hosted stepsend instance, right? Yep, exactly. It's going to map to your name and your own custom domain. And so anyone can deploy this and we'll have the same part at the end, but everyone will have their own part at the beginning because it's being hosted on their own account. Cool. All right, great. Yeah. All right, and then let's go ahead and run steps and start and see see what happens. This is where the magic happens or the magic blows up and we yes. die. All right, so... So you can got... see two things here right now. So before you go anywhere, this is important to, to explain because this confuses people when they start. We have a local host 5001 running right now with a graphical editor, but that is not the endpoint. The endpoint is not actually on localhost 5001. The endpoint itself is on bore.stepsend.net for. So that is this actually is a live endpoint already is not okay. running on localhost, but you have a graphical running on localhost to query that endpoint. Got it. So, so... open up localhost 5001 and this is also nice because the graphical is already giving you your keys in here. Because if you want to hit this from a front end, which we're probably not going to go into this, you have steps and keys, which I, I think you showed at the very beginning of your stream, by the way. So we might want to roll those. Ah, <laughs> um, cool. Sounds good. It, it was in your account. It was it was showing those. So oh, that's how they, you actually they access just show. that. Got but it. This okay. Is being, um, this is being included in your graphical right now. Got it. We might want to tuck those behind a little like show button <laughs> for future reference. Yeah, yeah, it, it should be. I'm not yeah. sure why why it isn't. Okay. But, um, so let's just write a, a t- so actually first thing, open the explorer. Cool. And then hit get test. And then hit nice. all the buttons. Except oh. test mock. Sounds good. Yeah. Got it. There you go. So there's our first GraphQL query. And as you can see, we're getting back all of our different types. So you have the date, and then you have a more specific date time. You got your float, you got your ints. Got your JSON. One is just like an empty JSON object. So like you, can, you have kind of two JSON test cases here. Of like what happens if they just throw an empty JSON object? You can figure that Got out it. as well. So yeah. So now this is just like our kind of first get up and go kind of thing. So yeah. Cool. Questions so far? Um, not for me. No. This is this is making sense so far. So this is um, like just I, I I think one thing I had. Uh, make sure in my head just because it's string string the first one is just the name and the second one is the type yes yeah that's a little confusing based on this example but that's exactly the thing so you wouldn't necessarily have to call these like the exact same thing that's just so when the data pops out you can actually see what's what but um, yeah you would call it anything and then it would just return either the string or the int or the float so like as long as i point do like that means, and basically yeah um it'll it should if i refresh maybe is that you'll of... refresh and then the explorer will be yeah so try name oh yeah name there it is cool. all the way at the bottom yeah, yeah. so obviously that's yeah, not a, a real name but i just want to kind of like point out this is the like the the, the key here is what we're calling it and then that's the type. And then the exclamation yep. mark means it's required. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. Cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, or, that's... Can't, or non-nullable. Can't be nullable. Got it. Cool. Thank you for that clarification. Um, awesome. Yeah, so this is good for me. 
uh so far awesome. we've, we've we've got a an, an endpoint and that is live here at I don't, i'm not sure if chat can see that but um down at the bottom it yeah. has the boar.stepsin.net. So that's that's already been deployed there, and we can hit that um, on that end, uh, just as long mm -hmm. as we, we we send it an actual request. Yeah, and so one thing that I like to do is I'll then have like an insomnia open where I'll test that endpoint from insomnia, and then I can put my key steps and keys in insomnia for the header and then work with it that way because it's, uh, it's nice to kind of like just get that verification it's like okay it's working through like the the steps in thing but it's like what if i just actually hit this from any api tool say they postman like we did a, a postman stream where they they show us how to how to work with nice. something like this with their graphql stuff so most api tools now will have graphql specific tooling and Got like it. autocomplete and type checking and, and stuff like that so that's all pretty great awesome all right all so right, now cool. though um so um, the, Cynthia, the data was question. populated um, yeah, yeah oh. just as mock data. So this is why I'm starting. This is the first example. This data is not coming from anywhere. This is just what StepSend does. If you don't actually give it a real endpoint, the next one we're going to do, though, is going to use the JSON placeholder API, though. And then that's where the data is going to be populated. And then we're going to show how to do like a database. So that there's going to be data from lots of different places. Right now, this data is nowhere it's just like built into steps in as like a mock test thing cool yeah awesome good, good question, question. Yeah. um great okay, so now so what do we want to do let's create another file and let's call this um users.graphql cool yep and then we're going to create not an interface we're going to create a type this time so it's going to be type user and then you can capitalize user Yep. And then curly braces. Yep. And then we're going to have um, an ID. So a lowercase ID colon and uppercase ID. ID like so, that or? Yeah. Uh, both both capitalized, both cool. I and D. Yeah, because that's a, another GraphQL thing is that there's usually an ID for each uh, type and things like that. Got Steph. it. Hey, Steph. And then now we're going to add just a bunch of strings, which is going to be name, username, and email. Uh, you want capital name or these will all be lowercase. Yeah, because the so this is where the the type has to match up with the the API we're gonna hit. So um, before we actually do that, we should actually show the JSON placeholder API. So okay. um, last one was email string. Yeah. And do you want these so, um, um, non nullable? Um, let's put exclamation points after all of them. Yeah. Okay. Oop. All right. And then let's do uh, type query now. So outside of the the type user. Oh, yeah, my keyboard's being funky. Uh, yeah, luckily there's not a whole lot of code typing that we'll be doing in this. Because as you see, like the stuff we're writing is going to be very very concise. So cool. Got your back. Now we're gonna do um, get mock user, and you do it camel case. Cool. Yeah, or sorry, users. Yeah, because it's going to return an array of users. Okay. Yeah, and then do colon, and then inside array, inside brackets, uh, do the user. Yeah, like that? it'll be, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so basically what this means is that it's going to return an array of these user objects. Okay. Cool. And that's the whole query. And now here's where the steps and stuff comes in. So you're going to um, make another line under get mock users. And then um, go over two spaces or tab if you're one of those people. And then do at rest. At rest. Yep. So all lowercase. Yep. Cool. And then um, parentheses. Yep. And then all lowercase, just the word endpoint. Yep. And then colon. And then quotations. And then inside there, you're going to use the, the JSON placeholder. So uh, do you want me to read it out to you or do you want to just grab it? I dropped it in the chat. Um, yeah, I'll grab it if you think it's a little too much. Um, is it the gist? Where are you dropping it? Oh, did you drop it in the chat chat? Ah, you did. Put okay, it in the chat got chat it. Was not sure. One. Yeah, which, which is easier for you for when I'm um, sending you stuff? 
if you want to share it with chat, like if it's something like, hey, here, you, if you're following along or if, or if, or if mm-hmm. you want to you know, like share docs with the chat, um, that works. If it's not something that like the chat's really going to care about, um, then cool. you can drop it in the DMs uh, that you were using before. Either way. I'm going to drop a, just a gist also, which is essentially like a script of how what we're, what we're doing here. Cool. People really, really want to follow along, but that's not really yeah. necessary. So I do I just... Confused if you start looking ahead. <laughs> so I do this? Like I drop all that in there? No. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So so just the like the endpoint. Yeah. Okay. Just, just the, the URL. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Exactly. Thanks. Yeah. So what's going on here now is this is essentially telling step Zen we are going to run a query with that type that we defined, and then it's going to resolve it with this endpoint. Okay, got it. So now let's save that and then go back to index.graphql because we have to now add have to add our, the file. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah. it'll be exactly like that. Users.graphql. Cool. Yep. Yeah. All right. And then you can go back to your graphical editor. And should be, yeah. Uh, so this one so now, this one and um, yeah, and you should refresh anytime you you change something because then you'll have it in the explorer for you. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah so this yeah. is really great because like you don't really even have to know how to write these these queries technically. Right. And this is yeah, this is kind of a, a problem unfortunately because of your screen resolution right now. <laughs> Normally it's it's not as big of an issue. Yeah. But this is not a step send thing. This is a graphical thing the editor that you yeah it's yeah. is a popular open source library that we're just kind of sticking our, our logo on top yeah. of yeah so, but yeah. i mean that's that's what gatsby and everyone like it's yeah mm-hmm. uh yeah it's a wonderful tool um so we're gonna go Let's ahead just and do all, all four of those yep awesome yeah. okay so, so that is pulling that yeah. from here right from this Le- leanne graham is that what it's doing leanne graham yeah cool Okay. Yeah. So now you can see that we, if you've ever done GraphQL before, this is where you'd have to write resolvers in like Apollo server because you have to be able to hit the rest endpoint and then write essentially JavaScript code to then take the object and map it into something that makes sense to your schema. So that's what Stepsend is doing for you. It's letting you not have to write resolvers and just go with like a schema and then the query and then you start writing the queries and it figures out how to do like the resolvers, which is like mind blowing. (laughs) Yeah, so there's nothing special about like this endpoint necessarily. It's just like 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 I could have put in any kind of REST API here and it, 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 it would have taken care of it. It's not like you have explicitly mapped out the json placeholder dot typico dot com endpoints and and that's already figured out yeah this... the only thing we had to figure out was the the user type itself and Got we it. even have um a, a tool that lets you convert json to graphql so we like i i've done this enough where i can kind of just look at an api and very quickly you'd be like here are the types and here are the what it actually is just from like looking at it but it, there's actually an auto generating tool we have that can do that part for you, which is really great. So this actually makes a lot of cool. uh, stuff more accessible, I think, to beginners. And this is why I've been like really passionate about this project as someone who is like really coming into my job as a as a junior dev because like Steps is my first actual tech job. Like I was in a Got boot it. camp before wow. doing it. So having access now to like all these APIs like really, really quickly because of like the power it gives you it like it actually is really really cool and something that i'm like very big on kind of like getting people like wrap their mind around because when you first look at steps then it could be kind of hard to understand like what it's really doing because you're writing so little code but um once you kind of like understand it it's like a very easy way to work with a lot of stuff all at once which is really great especially if you're into like the jam stacks there's just so many like services now and there's so many ways to connect to so much different stuff but um every api is different <laughs> like every single right. api that's, is different yeah. yeah that's what i'm kind of like just trying to f- make sure that like this like yes every api is different so like to make like one solution that that just takes them all in feels you know near impossible to me just you know 
Uh, so that's our just, just kind of clarifying that this isn't like a thing that you've already mapped out before because it's a REST API and it's it's in a certain format when we can tell steps in um, what that format is and what we're expecting, um, then we, we, we can work with that in our GraphQL API. Got yeah. it. All right. Okay. So the next one we will do now is going to be almost identical, but instead of an at rest directive, it's going to be an at GraphQL directive. Got it. So we're moving we're on going to, the to be GraphQL bit. Yeah. And we'll be using, of course, the ever fantastic Rick and Morty GraphQL API. Nice. Are you a Rick and Morty fan? I have n no. I'm I'm not. Not 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 because yeah, I just haven't really gotten into it. The fan base keeps me away, to be honest. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I'm yeah. a fan I'm a fan of the show, but I, I've been fans of lots of things with terrible fan bases. I used to yeah. like Tool, so I get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it's not that I'm explicitly against it or anything. Just haven't haven't dipped my toes in too too far. Um, all it's, right, cool. It can be pretty aggro, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's um, create a, a file called characters.graphql. Cool. Are we gonna do a type here? And then let's just go ahead and add that into our index.graphql right now. All right. Don't forget characters. <laughs> Austin knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, Austin, how's it going? Good to see you. And yeah, that's uh, that was an excellent, excellent quote. <laughs> you still like tools. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so, um, got so characters. This is be a type character. Cool. Yep. With an ID of ID again, and then so this will be almost identical to the last one, and then a name and an image, which will both be string. And so one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm not having you write out the entire schema. And so the the idea here is I want to show more so that the directives is the important thing here. Cool. And then the the if you really want to like work with someone like this and be able to like send any kind of query, you would have to get the entire schema. But um, okay. that's also like we have auto generating tools to like introspect a GraphQL schema because one of the things about GraphQL schemas is that they usually, if it's a public one, they will let you introspect it and basically say like, what are the types? And they just like tell you. So we've built tools that will let you kind of kind of do that as well. Let me just drop that link cool. into the chat as well. You can introspect. Yeah, it's everyone. good to see you, Mike. Welcome to the chat, buddy. Hello, hello. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Yeah. right now though because That's it'll give us like a though. like ten thousand line file <laughs> no worries yeah cool uh back to this Great. all right so we got a character yeah. id yeah. So name that's image. all good yeah and then we're then going to create a type characters and so this is because the rick and morty api is kind of nested in the sense that we're the thing that we really want is going to be the characters but to do that we have to do this so do results all lowercase and then comma, and then in brackets, uh, character. Or sorry, not comma, not colon. <laughs> sorry? Sorry, not not comma, colon. Yeah, there's Got no, it, cool. No commas. Uh, yeah. Like that? Yeah, and so now what happens is the field is, so this is kind of more GraphQL jargon here, but um, you have these types, and then the types have fields. And so the the fields can return other types <laughs> so this is why it's a graph and that you could just have things nested within each other as much as you want and so now we're going to then write a query that's going to return characters but it's okay. not going to return characters in a bracket okay not following yet but oh. i will once it comes back yeah. i'm sure yeah so just do a type query so outside of the characters yep Yep, and then this will be characters all lowercase, and then characters again, but with capital C. And so okay. there, we're not putting this in a bracket because it's already going to return an array because the array is within the results. Okay. So that's why we're just going to return like the characters type. So this is just like part of like there is a little bit of kind of GraphQL stuff you need to know. And um, there's a question in the chat, which is, is the REST directive unique to Step Zen? So the 
the directives, all of the directives we're showing here are unique to step Zen. So the at rest one was unique. And now we're about to do an at GraphQL one. And these are the, the essential, like the, these are the special sauce of, of step Zen because it's, going to be identical to everything else you already know about GraphQL in the sense that you're still writing queries and types and your schema is pretty much unchanged, but the directive is what is really doing all of like the, the stitching together of the endpoint itself to those queries. So this is something that's been in the, the GraphQL spec for as, as long as it's been around is the ability to write directives and just give any sort of custom behavior you want, but you don't really see it that often because people can build GraphQL projects from scratch and just like get to do all the things you want. But yeah. this is a nice way to kind of build in conventions into GraphQL that are steps and specific. Awesome. Great questions. Yep. Uh, Cynthia, really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Keep the questions coming. Always, yeah. always a fan of explaining because I used to be a teacher. So this is one yep. thing you and me actually haven't gone. <laughs> yeah. And then now we're going to do at GraphQL, all lowercase. And then, yep. and then exactly like the other one, um, parentheses, and then endpoint. Yep, and then you got it. So that cool. should that should do it. And then make sure to save. Yep. Hit save. Heading to our characters results ID image name. Okay. Yep. There we go. Cool. Yep, so now that's coming from the Rick and Morty API. And now, yeah, let's let's hit a couple of these yeah, ones. Yeah, kind of want to just... So we have our characters up here at the top. And then a little bit further, we have our mock users. And then, uh, oh, oh, I guess that was it. Uh, oh, the get test. What was it was that? in the middle. Ah, okay, got get it. Test. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, cool, right? Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> now we're able to just basically work with the entire thing as if it's one unified graph and you can write any kind of queries you want to get any sort of data. And this is really, this was the promise of GraphQL from the beginning is that you would be able to do this with your front end people. This is something that the creators of GraphQL who worked at Facebook at the time, they have said that they started from the mental model of a front end developer and worked backwards from that. So they basically yeah. said, what is the nicest possible query we could write and then create an entire language to facilitate writing those kinds of queries. So this is why steps in kind of really leans into that. And you can do stuff like this, right? Where like, I, um, if, if I wanted to have a different name, I can like, the, the, there's just lots of small details in GraphQL that make it really mm -hmm. nice to work with. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is, this is really cool. This is exciting. Just how quickly we're up and running with this. Um, mm -hmm. we, like you said, we did not write much code, uh, specifying some of this stuff was pretty, pretty simple. Honestly, this, this is really interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I can't believe we, we've already got like three different API or I guess two different APIs built into this yeah two apis and uh and a and mock. just some mock data but and the then mock's now great. we're gonna get a database okay all right nice yes. uh checking off the graph we, api we're but fine it can't just be any kind of database it needs to be a super database super base database got it nice awesome so uh this is great because i know you already know how to how to use super base at least a little bit clumsily so let's, let's, let's at least spin it up that's, spin that's... up the database because it takes a minute or two and okay. then we'll start writing code how do you want me to do that? Do you want do you want me to use one of mine? Um, I mean, if you if you want, you can just make a, a brand new one, or I can make a new one. If you hit your limit, you just make a new organization, then you can make more. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can spin one up. Give me one sec. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I can talk a little about for people in chat who may not be hip to all the million new like dev tools companies out there. Superbase is a way to host a Postgres database in a like really, really nice UI interface because they want to essentially mirror the functionality of Firebase, but with a relational Postgres database. So if you're someone who's ever used Firebase before, you know that it's not just a database, it's also like a, a querying language and client libraries and authentication and storage and serverless yeah. functions and, 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 and. And so Superbase is 
the equivalent of that built on an entire open source stack, which is what I'm a really big fan because I like using Postgres. It's what I've been using all the time. I've been using Redwood, so I'm like very familiar with Postgres. I use it all the time. So having the ability to just spin up a Postgres database in like a minute or two and then just start using it is really, really powerful. Because it's like, you'll never need to install Postgres locally like ever again <laughs> because these things just work so well and they're free for the most part. Yeah. So it's and it's like great for beginners who really just want to like get their hands on a database, but don't want to have to like worry about breaking something or paying like a $40 bill to Amazon because their database was the wrong kind of database and yep. all this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And everything that includes, um, like they have auth, they have storage, they've got a whole, whole bunch of stuff now. It's just, uh, it, yeah, it's great, great little service. Um, and, and there's a few of them too. Like I, I've been using super base, but planet scales, another one that's, Kind of up and coming, yep. um, fauna db, uh, right? Yeah, I've I've used almost all of them. I'm actually a really big fan of Railway because Railway cool. is uh, Postgres and MySQL and Redis and MongoDB, so you can use any of those like just as an add-on. So you oh. actually have multiple different types of databases all at the same time, which is really weird, but works yeah. pretty dang well actually. So huh. there's um, Cockroach DB. I think also had a serverless offering. I've now. heard so of that. Here's, like databases. I this is like a golden that age of like databases right now. CockroachDB is just I don't understand. I don't I don't know why they would name it that. I I, I don't know. But anyway, because <laughs> the database can't die. Right, but I mean, like also like, uh, right, like not <laughs> not a lot of people like that thing. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Egan says railway is dope. Yeah, I, I think we might be trying to play with it after Superbase. Is is that right? I don't know. We'll um, see if yeah, we if it. we end up with enough time, because I, cool. I have um, uh, another example that will involve uh, like a Redwood backend with, with awesome. Railway. So yeah, awesome. see if we, we get to that. Um, so I do have Superbase up. Uh, would it be fine if we use the data that we just uh, worked with on Friday for the donations? Is that cool? Or, or do we um, want to do something totally different? Do we want so to just do it from scratch? We're going to want a fresh, a fresh okay, database because what we're going to do is we're going to show how to essentially hook in to their RESTful API. So yeah, we're going to want just a, like a fresh so database or, or a do fresh a, table on a database. That we're going to do a fresh well. table called Step Zen. Yeah. Um, all right, do we want anything? I'm going to pull this over. hope this isn't... Um, like all this stuff's been public created out this is this should be all fine um anything here that we want to so yeah you know. so then uh just add a column yep and then have that column say uh name and then make it text okay yep and that should be good save yep all right creating a new table Okay, and then there's going to be some code I'm going to send you privately. So we're going to need kind of two things. We're going to need your API key, and we're, which you're probably going to grab off stream. And then yep. we're going to want the uh, endpoint of, because it gives you like an endpoint that is exposing a RESTful API. So this is something people may not necessarily know about Superbase is that they include this library called Postgres, not Postgres with a T oh. at the end, which is an auto-generating REST API for your tables. Okay. Which is pretty Interesting. Sweet. So where do I put this configuration set thing that, that you just yeah, sent so me? Yeah, so you're going to create a new file called config.yaml. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then there's where that's going to go. And then where the XXXX is, that's going to be your API key that you get from your Superbase dashboard. So that's what you okay. want to make sure you don't expose. Um, and where does the endpoint go? Or, or Oh, we're, we're going to use that in the GraphQL query, like like we've been using? Yeah, so cool. Yeah, I popped you uh, another big hunk of code. Make a, a new file called book or, uh, yeah, books. Okay. Um, so, uh, we want the public key or the secret one, just probably the public, right? For the API key, there's always two. The secret one has like unlimited power and then the public key you can I think put... it's pretty sure it's the public one. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Save to that. Close to that. Make sure I don't open that. 
Um, I mean, although the public one's kind of fine to expose, honestly, um, it's not that big of a deal because uh, for the most part, I've got it locked down. Anyway, okay, so uh, I, I got that done. Uh, and you got said, how do you uh, miss the holiday party? But figure out happened today. Yeah, great to, great to have you. Thank you so much for coming through. Um, this is the last stream of the year, so you're just in time. Uh, let me go over and grab this. So type book ID. All right, what do we want to call this file that we're setting up now? This is going to be... Um, yeah, let's just call it books.graphql for now. And I'm realizing now because of how we named the table, we might have to modify this a bit. So we're going to be returning um, probably instead of books, the endpoint is going to be step zen. Cool. Okay, so typically, chat, you're going to uh, name your thing not after the company that, that you're uh, working with <laughs> Actually, or, or the tool. can we go back? Let's see. Can we, can we rename the table? I want to see. Honestly, that. one thing that's been a pain in the butt with Superbase is been like renaming tables and changing stuff. So I'm skeptical. Okay. Then you I'm... should just delete that table and then create a new one called books. Okay. Well, let me try it because I don't want to... Don't want to totally count them out, but changing stuff mm -hmm. in that like config area, um, I've battled that a bunch. Uh, but it mm -hmm. seems, let me refresh and make sure that this actually worked. It seems like um, we actually were successful. So yeah, books, got it. Awesome. But yeah, okay, I, great. I have battled that. And then that the only other thing times. you got to put in is the Sweet. XXXX on your endpoints. That's also something you'll be able to get. So this is because you're already having that REST API exposed. They give you this endpoint. And then all you do is add on uh, a route for the like the name of the table. So cool. Um, I think if you're if you also already got your key in your config.yaml, that should be everything we need I to do. do. And this should, should I restart so actually let me just node? let me I should I should ex actually explain some of this code though because okay. there's a lot happening here that yeah. wasn't in the others. So go back to books.graphql. Sounds good. All right, so Oops, yeah, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, yeah. So the the first thing we got here is that we're including now a configuration along with the endpoint. So if you look at the at rest below books, it's very similar to the other one we were doing, where it has the endpoint and then you put the endpoint in. But also now we have uh, headers with an API key. So this is where when you're actually building real projects that have like stuff and that you want to secure, you're gonna have got API it. keys, you're gonna have off headers, you're gonna have all this kind of stuff, which is, can be like really hard and confusing to, to manage. So Sebzen basically says all of your secret stuff will always be in config.yaml. Everything that is not in config.yaml should not be secret stuff. So it lets you have all the stuff you want to actually like not lose. And then actually real quick, let's make um, uh, a dot git ignore just because this is a, a good practice. And cool. then put your config.yaml in that dot git ignore file. Uh, thank you for the uh, follow. I'm I'm mostly disco. Welcome to stable. Good to have you. Cool. And then awesome. the other thing now is we're writing a mutation and not just a query. So this okay. is again GraphQL. You write queries to get data, and then you write mutations to change data. So we have the endpoint with the configuration and the headers, but we also specify now the method, which is going to be post. And then we're going to do a post body. And if you look at the post body code, this is like the one kind of area now where stuff gets a little bit hairy and where yeah. it's going to be useful to have some steps and examples already kind of written for you because I figured out how to write this absurd thing right here. Because you got to do okay. a lot of like character escapings and, and stuff like that. So it's basically doing a dot get to grab the name, which is going to be what we're going to input into our create book because we want to be able to give the book a name when we created it. So we're going to write a graphical query to create a book and then you're okay. going to give it the name. And then it takes that and it maps it to the, to the post body. So if we go back to our graphical editor now, then we can, let's clear all this out. Yep. Um, oh, we didn't, we didn't add the file. Next. Cool. Maybe we would forget at least once. <laughs> Books.graphql. Yep. All right, cool. Fresh. Uh... Takes a, a second to save. So. Cool. Good. Nice. Yep. I'll say from the start, I'm no coder, but very much an ideas man. Background is Domino Technical Architect. Interesting. Inter a, a Domino Technical Architect. I'm interested in what that like domino pizza or domino 
like dominoes. I'm guessing the lotus, lotus notes. notes. I'm not. I'm not as familiar with those. I, I've 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 heard of those, or I've heard of that. Um, mm-hmm. But that's really interesting. It's great to have you, though. Always yeah, great. You know, I'm I'm a big believer in um, outside perspectives. Uh, both Anthony and I come from different backgrounds as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, we are not classically trained developers. Um, so yeah, definitely welcome the outside experience. Uh, okay. Hold up. Yeah. Sorry. I I just, I I got clicky. Uh, Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there should be a create book. Oh, I know why. Because we're only looking at queries right now. Yeah. So, um, underneath your, your stream thing, it, <laughs> you can't quite see it. Cause you pull up the, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'm probably still very confused there. So there you select your mutations. Okay. And then you can, uh, so hit the plus button. Oh, uh, cool. There we go. Now we're talking. Yep. So, oh, okay. Then, so I'm going to get rid of the query. Is that right? Yep. Correct. Yep. And then you're going to, so you can either write the name in on the left or in the query itself. And so, yep, the old man and the sea. That is a book. And then just return That's the ID book. and name. And let's see All right. how it does with that. Hmm. Okay, so that's fine. Okay. But if we go back to now our super base uh, table. I'm sorry, what did you just say, Anthony? Did the you say super base? Oh, super, super. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Hey, look at that! It got in there. Yeah. So there's, awesome. there's a slight bug there. It it should actually be returning the ID and name. So something for it. me to figure out one day. But it actually does write it to the database. That is the far more important part. Awesome. <laughs> That's really. So cool. now if we do the books query again, we should actually get back the the book. Oh, nice. Okay, so. Um, how do I close out of the mutation? How, how do I get the queries back? Yeah, so I think you need to go back to the bottom and hit plus on query. Yeah. Ah, there you go. I yeah. just closed it. Yeah, oh, when you're yeah. working with both queries and mutations, the the explorer gets a little a little dice here. Got it. All right, so yeah. books I should be able to get to the back. Awesome. All there right, you know. nice. So with steps, then I can create mutations that uh, work with these same databases that i'm able to query from and just through the one tool like once again like i can't tell you how much i enjoy just using one thing learning one thing through steps that i'm able to not only query all my data but maybe update user data or as we just showed like uh you know if if i'm doing like a personal library app or something um and i also want to call in reviews from amazon and maybe connect it to like a books database and something else like a weather database or whatever the heck um i can have that all coming in through one api Mm -hmm. exactly that's really nice that's really nice Uh, (laughs) so so someone what Oh, watching get exploration actually just no tackle infrastructure in real time. Yeah, yeah right. Because so. yeah, I mean, because yeah, that's kind of what we had to do. I had to, um, because Team C's the the charity that we raised all the money for, uh, because Team C's had an API that was open, like we didn't need to authenticate or anything for it. But we also it also wasn't documented, so we didn't know how to use it. Like beyond just a quick uh, request for the team f- front end horse. Um, it was paginating at 150, and we had no idea how to go beyond that first page of results. Mm-hmm. So we set up a super base to uh, basically hold all of the um, donations just in case we hit over 150. And we were close. We were like at like 125 or something. So it, it, was, it was a good call to have that as a backup because if we hit above 150, all of a sudden our donations would have started like waffling back and forth right because it's just been like 150 and it it wouldn't wouldn't have really grown uh but we had to like combine these two different um points of data and uh yeah it was it was it was a little bit of a pain in the butt but having something like steps then uh to kind of manage all those things and to manage you know more uh the as as we grow and scale this thing is uh is super cool um Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I can answer. Your, uh, can I ask your advice on something? Can wait till later if you're busy. Yeah, feel free to drop any drop any questions in the in the chat. Yeah, because always, always happy to. It's not just Anthony and I here. Uh, we've got some fantastic, much more knowledgeable people than I uh, in the chat. So absolutely ask away. And if it's something that you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'll I'll be I'll be happy to you know give you a more fleshed out response. Either we can take it to the Discord or um, I'll I'll let you know. But there's a good chance that people like Ben and Michael and everyone else who's who's in chat. Yeah, you uh, got got quite the hive mind you've built up. You've, you've got good folks there that, that that can definitely help. Um awesome. So we connected a database not only to read from. I I didn't expect us to be able to write to it so easily. Um mm -hmm. it was a bit of copy paste but not a ton of code. So that that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, like that's yeah, not I think a ton. Where we're at right now with time, we'll probably skip over the the fauna one because there's also if people check out the the gist there's um also one example where essentially we're going to do we would have done the exact same thing with Superbase, but with fauna and then that goes through a graphql api so there you're just writing regular native graphql mutations you don't have to do that weird post body kind of thing so that's like kind of the next step that's like even nicer but um yeah so if you want to just go down to the fauna section yeah, there you go. Yeah, so you have like this is the the fauna will give you like a bunch of mock data for a store. So you create a store type, and then you can find the store by ID. You can return all the stores. So you create a store, update a store, delete cool. a store. But um, I think pretty, I think people pretty much get the get the idea at this point of the the GraphQL endpoints and the config and kind of stuff like that. All right, well, that's a, that's a long one. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> totally want to build a basic code, but needed touching up as I'm no coder. I got to flower it up, so to speak. I paid him five grand. Whoa, that's a lot of money. We can, uh, <laughs> I think we can come back to that in a bit, Anthony. I'd, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah, but I, I think maybe Ben in chat or, or someone can, um, yeah, it seems like a detailed question that I, I, I definitely want to help out mostly disco just don't want to derail this entirely but i i appreciate you bringing it here um so yeah, what do we totally. what do we want to do next anthony yeah next um i want to show you how redwood works so okay just follow along with Exciting. the redwood api with netlify functions so if you scroll down just a little bit more cool got a command right there create some horses in so um, just Should grab I that. Grab this. Command. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then just um, run I, that baby. All right. I did. Uh, actually, no, I did not. Okay. I was. I was. I was lying. Uh, Should I do it in the boilerplate or outside? Outside the boilerplate. Okay. Yeah. Yarn create redwood app horse and redwood. Nice. Yeah. And you actually, you should. Uh, oh, I, I can stop it. I can stop it. No, no, Stuck. no. no. Is it you should? Uh, well, now this might create a folder now you're gonna to want to delete so first delete that folder if it created a folder and then get a new vs code open it did not create a folder we are good okay great yeah so just get a new vs code open okay and then keep this one where it is yeah because you you can have your redwood project and your steps and projects both nested inside of each other if you if you want but this is yeah like kind of simple how our lives we just keep them keep them separate so okay cool go ahead and run that command and then this should take like two minutes at least. So okay. let's talk a little bit about what Redwood is because yeah. I know you've heard of it, but you've never actually used it. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. So with uh, Redwood, so Redwood is actually how I got into kind of the whole like open source coding world in general. Uh, the My job at Steps, and it was actually a direct result of the work I was doing on Redwood. So it's a... Uh, full stack JavaScript framework for apps. And it's it says here it's for, for startups, but honestly, like, I'm not building a startup and I use Redwood all the time. You can use it for all sorts of things. You don't need to necessarily build a startup <laughs> with it. But the idea being that it's a great tool for getting going really fast with a full stack project. And so when people say full stack these days, it's not always clear exactly what they mean because people refer to things like Next.js as a full stack framework. But with Redwood, the, the real big difference is that it includes an ORM, which is Prisma. So have you ever used Prisma? Um, no, but I have used ORMs before. Um, and thank you for the bits, mostly Disco. I pretty appreciate it. I, I will be reading that and checking that out. Thank you. Um, I mean, this yeah. Would be 
yeah, this will be great then because we got a, a Prisma uh, employee in the chat, Austin. And... Oh, Austin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Prisma Austin, is. We've got to talk, RM. buddy. Yeah, that's you should definitely get him on to, to show you some Prisma stuff. So it's a way to turn JavaScript into SQL because we okay. all know that we just want to write JavaScript. That is the Please. only thing that we want to do. No Please. one wants to write SQL, even though I, they that, probably should learn. I should developers learn. learn at least a little SQL. I should learn SQL. more. I, there's so many things I should learn, though. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. But um, the great thing about Prisma is that you don't necessarily have to ever worry about writing SQL ever again. And you also will be able to use it to do migrations on your database. And okay. so this is part of like the real power you get, which is the ability to set up your database with the table. So the thing we did manually through Superbase's UI, we're going to do programmatically through Prisma now. Okay. Oh, nice. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So uh, my ORM experience, just so you kind of know where I'm coming from, is mainly through Django, the Python framework. Great. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed their ORM. And that stopped me from having to do a whole bunch of SQL stuff. And that was kind of a joy. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that was like my first they're, web they're dev project. Yeah. So ORMs are very nice. Um, I'm a fan. So uh, should we check on that install and see? Oh, we're still yep. running. Cool. Oh, so and Redwood has going. Prisma under the hood. Is that correct? Yes, so Redwood okay. is bundling Prisma for you. So you can use Got Prisma it. just by itself and bring it into like a Next.js project. Or uh, this is a common thing now with Remix. If you follow like the Remix docs, they'll show you how to bring in Prisma as well. So Redwood is saying, we want to just assume from the beginning that you want Prisma and actually bake it into the CLI itself. So we're going to run some commands that are prefixed with Redwood, but are actually just aliasing it to a Prisma command. So when you're learning Redwood, knowing where the boundary between Redwood and Prisma actually is can be a little fuzzy until you've kind of like gotten through the process of like ripping Prisma out and like seeing what breaks, <laughs> which is a fun experiment, but not like really that recommended. Like you, you should probably, at least when you're learning, stick with just using Prisma. And then you can already have it. So you don't need to figure out how to integrate Prisma into your project. It's just assumed by default. And there's a lot of kind of like nice downstream effects of that. Cool. While that's still going, though, let's open up Railway. Um, we are here. It looks like oh, we're great. good. Cool. It takes longer on Windows than, than Mac, just to, <laughs> unfortunately. So normally that would take about half the time if you ran it on like an M1. But um, this is I don't life. know why my, why my code uh, thing broke. I don't know why this happened. But ever since I, I can't open VS Code uh, the fun way. So Horsten Redwood. Okay. Yarn Redwood Dev. Open folder repos uh is it horse zen or is it redwood horse zen it's horse that. zen dash redwood horse zen there we go cool yep. select folder all right nice we are in yep all right uh -huh. and should we do all yarn right, so now redwood dev yarn redwood dev yeah this cool. will kick off our dev server all right and nice. it'll just give us a nice little splash page should we install... don't worry don't worry about that okay, cool yeah it's That's it's cool don't IDE. don't use the redwood ide <laughs> it's like it, it it tells you to like check it out but also like that's kind of like a, a weird beta project that does not actually work that well so don't Interesting. use the redwood ide good tip yet. all right cool <laughs> it'll be very cool one day it's that day is not today <laughs> got it all right so kicked off a local host yeah and then uh, this server. is going to give us like a kind of splash page and it'll it'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Cool. So now that we got that set up, we want a database that we can use in our Redwood project. So if you go to railway.app, we're going to show how to do railway. And the cool thing about railway is it spins up a database in like 10 seconds, unlike Superbase, which does take about a minute or so. Yeah. So this is like really the fastest way to get a Postgres database up and running. So go ahead and do new project. Okay. Where do we want to deploy from? Provision Postgres. So okay. provision right Postgres QL. Yep. Uh -huh. cool. So this will then assume you already want Postgres when it sets up. And then, do you have many WordPress people in? Um, we have a couple, for, but for the most part, Disco, we... Um, we tend to lean more 
Jamstack. I mean, which which you can do with WordPress, but typically mm -hmm. more headless CMS is like I I work for a headless CMS called Prismic, um, and so I don't have a ton of WordPress experience. I've been mainly using headless CMSs, uh, but we definitely have some people around that are at least familiar with WordPress. But I, I I don't know offhand too many experts. My friend Colby Fayok is really good with WordPress, um, but yeah. web dev has let you down. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so cool. if you go to the Postgres on the left, then you can see just a little bit further down. Oh, all the got way it. The bottom. Sorry. Yep. And then go to connect and this will actually hide your keys for you. Nice. And so we're going to want to use the bottom one because there's, there's two things here. And there's the psql command, which will let you directly connect to your database if you wanted, but we don't need that because we're going to connect through Prisma. So we just need the connection URL. Okay. So you should go off screen for a second. All right. And then uh, in your with, Redwood with, with project, this or with my code. So with so with, with this, right? Uh, yeah. So the code, the code, and the and the, you can you'll be able to copy this without exposing it, but you're going right. to have yeah. to drop it into your project in your .env file. Yep. Uh, dot en, just the dot env. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so um, dot env, it'll have a commented out part where it says yeah, database it underscore URL. So you want to uncomment that and then put the, the connection string in there. Cool. Um, and, database URL, test database URL. Um, which one do I want? So database URL, not okay, the test cool. database URL. You can keep that, keep everything else uncom keep everything else commented out. Cool. And I'm going to turn on... Uh, Oh, didn't mean to do that. Do you have cool. one of those mask your, your keys yeah, type I things? Do. So um, we've, we've nice. got that in there just so chat can see. Um, there is Great. stuff here. Um, it's just masked out. So save that. That is set. Uh, do I need to restart the dev server? Um. So you will. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then keep the dev server actually off for a second. Okay. And then go back to, so first now let's set up our, our schema. So let's go to the API folder. API. Okay. Yep. And then DB and then schema.prisma. Yeah. And so let's just change. So this gives you a, a default model. So, um, let's change that to say posts instead of user, or actually just post instead of user example. This so single word post. Yep. Cool. Yep. And then change email to a uh, title and then get rid of the unique constraint and then get rid of name and string. Yeah. And then, yeah, that should be good. We can also, we could do like a create at data, like something like that, but that's not really too, too important to what we're, what we're demonstrating right now. So let's just keep it, keep it simple. So save that. And cool. then, and then now run. So I'm just going to tell you this command. So do yarn space, RW space, Prisma space, migrate uh, yeah, space, and then DEV space and then dash dash name yep space and then posts and let me explain this before you before you run it okay. so what's happening here is we're telling redwood to run the prisma command and then the prisma command is migrate dev and then we're creating a migration that is named posts so this is going to create a table in our railway database for our posts that is specified with the posts model that we just wrote. Got it. I'll be honest. Uh, the word migrate just gave me a little bit of like, um, like, oh, right. I remember the stuff I didn't like about databases and ORMs and, and like, like the stuff that I struggled with being a first time developer in my mm -hmm. Python app and like, like breaking stuff, like migrations can go poorly once you have a whole lot of data and you don't know what you're doing and you're doing all kinds of stuff so i that that word came back i'm like oh right there was some stuff that that didn't get me pretty hard and i had to like roll back to snapshots and all that kind of stuff 
Mm-hmm. Ooh, sorry, just took, yeah. a, so took be, a mental trip that's, back in time. That's a great point, though, because I would be curious, when you ran migrations in Django, were you able to see the SQL it was actually using to set up the database? I don't... Th- I mean... Maybe, but also this was maybe like three years ago. Uh, Great. So, so run this command. And I'm going to show you something really cool. Okay. So what's great about the way Prisma handles migrations is that, oh, we forgot one other thing. Change SQLite to say Postgres, PostgreSQL at the, the second line. Yeah, so this is because if you want to, you could just do a SQLite database originally, cool. but we already have a, a Postgres in there. So we'll to do that. But what's yeah. really cool about the way these migrations work is that it's going to actually just write like a spit out a SQL file and show you what that is. So okay. it's it's very transparent in terms of like what the migration is is doing. And um I don't think we had copilot doing anything there's copilot copilot working i'll be curious I'm copilot yeah idea. copilot it's, it's on i mean it, it it tried to help me finish the postgres bit oh nice yeah oh yeah yeah huh, did, that's cool did, did help me so there. now if we see the migrations folder in in db we can see Got that it. yeah and then migration so there's the sequel it's gonna write for us okay cool very yep. cool all right, and now we're going to do one more command. We're going to do yarn space rw space g space scaffold yep, space and then post. Okay, yep. run it. Yep, and what this is going to do is this is going to give us like a whole admin UI for our posts so now go back to or run yarn redwood dev again okay i do like the built-in admin ui that django had so if you have that that's wonderful um yarn redwood dev yep yep and then we're gonna go back to localhost eight nine ten and then we're gonna do forward slash posts forward slash new Eight, nine, ten. Forward slash so posts. Oh, yep. Yep. Huh. And then create a post. Title uh, Anthony is super cool. <laughs> wow. Oh. And then that's our our thing. So right now this isn't set up to actually like work with the front end at all because the front end is not really important for this project because what we're going to do now is we're going to deploy this to Netlify and then it's going to then put the API into a serverless function. It basically takes your entire Redwood backend, bundles into one giant function and then exposes that through a Netlify function and then we're going to feed that into That's step wild. Step. That is yeah. wild. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I'm just trying to like wrap my head around it. That's really cool. Um, Mm -hmm. I just like free admin stuff. Um, honestly, Mm -hmm. like I, I like getting this for free in a thing. Um, this can come in handy in so many different ways. Uh, and this is just a layer over my Prisma database. Wait, who owns the Prisma database? Uh, Is Prisma always hosted? Oh, 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 it's so, Railway. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, a lot of, oh, a lot of right. moving pieces here. We, we grabbed <laughs> so that. Yeah, data. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It so was a uh, data right there um, in, your, in your Railway. So, yep. Yeah, uh huh. And then post. Anthony is there super cool. All right. Cool. I love that. I really love that. That is just a nice little abstraction uh, that I get for free um, on top of uh, It's so good. Awesome. All right, so uh, we want to deploy this, is what you said, right? So you want to basically get it on a Git repo and then connect that Git repo to. Oh, sorry, one more, one more command. So we okay. got to set up the the deployment. So you're gonna do yarn. You can turn your dev server off. We're not gonna need that. Uh, am I even in? There we go. Yeah. yeah. So then do yarn space rw space setup space deploy space and then netlify and cool. it's off screen a little bit let me that. yeah 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so then run that, and this will generate uh, a netlify.toml file for us. Cool, cool. Yep. So you scroll down to netlify.toml. Yep. Yeah, and so this is giving us a command and it's going to deploy all of our things. So then all you have to do now is get this in a Git repo and connect that Git repo to Netlify. And then you'll also have to include your database URL, but we can let you know how to do that once we once we get there. Cool. Um, do I have GitHub? I do. Do you know how to like? I do. So okay. gh repo create and then give it a name like and then your title? it used to just work like this but now you gotta do space dash dash public okay and then hit enter and then that should do it yeah let's i see realize you can't see it again chat is once again there we are all right yep uh okay yeah Got log it. in yeah uh yeah i do like this this workflow though i've started doing this HTTPS, I guess. Authenticate Git, yes. Log in with a web browser, sure. Should I be showing this on on stream? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> probably, probably not. Device activation. <laughs> All right. All right, should be good. All set. That shouldn't last more than a second, I think. Cool. Authentication complete. Awesome. I'm going to run that again. Add a git ignore. No, because we got one right here. Add a license. No. An origin git remote to your local repository. Yes. Uh, we, we didn't get an... Oh, no. I did do a git ignit. Cool. Git ignit. That's not how you say that. Uh, git ignition. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, so now we just get push. I know Did we you, did uh, do a commit. add and commit. Yeah. Cool. Uh, why we didn't switch over from master. So do a, so do a get add dot, just get add dot space dot. Yep. And then get commit dash M and then just give it a I, message. I, I, I already committed everything. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, gotcha. it just says public bra publish branch because we're on master. Um, and I think it probably created do we, do a main. Do we get status real quick? Okay, great. Yeah, push it. Or you set set the remote and then push it. Um, just get set remote. This is the one I always will grab. Yeah, I from honestly I always GitHub. just copy and paste yeah. from GitHub. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me. Yeah, because you should have a blank repo there now. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm logged in. I am logged in. Cool. So horse, nope, fine. Yeah. Horse Zen. Cool. Yep. Um, Perfect. Yep. So it's those last two commands. The, yeah, set the remote. All right. Should be good, I think. Okay, cool. Great. Sweet. Yeah, I think the, the, the GitHub CLI set it for you already. Awesome. Now Netlify. Yep. Should have probably used the dot com or something. Log in. I'll pull this off just in case I need to do anything. Yeah, can you refresh that just to make sure that actually the project is there and yep. whatnot? The the GitHub one. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Add new site, import an existing project. Cool. So adding from GitHub. Authorized. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Uh horse Zen. Sweet. Okay. So now it's probably going to And make then here's me... where you're going to add your, your database. You're under show advanced. So everything is good. Don't change anything. And then add new variable. And then that's where you'll grab the database underscore URL and then put it cool. in the, for the value. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of this off screen. Actually, you know what? I'll do it this way. So it's a little bit easier. Chat, how's it going? Um, you get to see us nice and large for a second because there's not much else to show. This is just easier. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong code repo in general. All right, so that was under my .env database URL. Pasting that in and then getting the URL. Running the whole gamut of services today. 
Yeah, right. Um, okay, so it is in and it's hidden, so we can... Actually, I, the cool thing is I could have done that on... Because Nellify, you have the, the extension to hide it from theirs. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm hiding it here and they're hiding it there, so that's the cool thing. Yeah. Could have done that. Sorry, chat. Sorry. You, 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 you didn't miss much, though. Um, all right, cool. So re it looks like it's Great. detected the build command already because we have the yeah. Netlify Tamil, right? Because that is That's what right. it's reading. Awesome. Yep. So mm -hmm. deploy. Yep, deploy. And then all this right. will take like probably like five, 10 minutes. So oh, while okay. that's going, we're going to set up the the step zen schema so let's go back now back now, to our quick, step zen. quick question did... is that going to be yeah. every time redwood is like every time i push a change i'll take like five to ten minutes so no, not necessarily it kind of depends what the change is and what needs to change it's okay. um this the first time it has to build a whole bunch of stuff including like the api and stuff like that so if you're just changing like the front end then we'll have to necessarily rebuild the it'll cache end. certain things yeah. and just mm -hmm. okay good yeah at least i think it, it, it may actually not and i'm just talking out of my butt but All right. <laughs> it's uh usually uh, a situation where you are only going to be you're you're not really going to be redeploying your redwood app like multiple multiple times a day because it's not it's not like a usually you're not going to be creating like fast changing like blog content with it you're going to be like setting up like an api and then the Got api it. is going to be like handling when data is updating and things like that so you're not rebuilding tons and tons of pages all the time because that's not really like what redwood's for so that's why the the build time itself is is not like a huge issue because you're not constantly like rebuilding like content with your Redwood. right it shouldn't be compared to like well levity builds th this fast because it's a very different beast right like you're not exactly the, the same yeah. the same state that you're building in a in a levity you wouldn't build with redwood right exactly yeah cool awesome um all right so we've got uh that uh did you say you wanted to do something in the meantime so yeah, let's so let's go back to the step zen uh project. Uh step zen, here we go. Yep. Cool. Yep, and then let's create um another file called posts. GraphQL. Yep. Let's add that to the index.graphql. Okay. Got it. Yep. And then now this will be a type post. Yep, which will have an ID, which is just int exclamation point. Cool. And then uh, title. Yeah, that's it was title. And then that'll be a string exclamation point. And then we'll now have a query type query. And then that'll be posts, all lowercase. Yep, which will then return an array with post. Yeah. Cool. And then add at GraphQL after that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the endpoint. Yep. And then endpoint. And then that is where the Netlify function goes in. So Got it. So should I grab what this is going to be? Let's first give this a nice name. So go to your site settings and just change the, or domain settings, yeah. And I usually just call it the same thing as the the repo for simplicity's sake. Horse Zen, what was it? Redwood? Redwood, yeah, dash Redwood, yep. Yep, and then save that. And if we go to this uh, the site functions... name is already taken. Oh, Did you I'm already grab it? it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah, give it a slightly different name. Cool. The sequel, nice. So actually, don't so you don't need to grab that first. Just save it and then go to functions, the okay. the fourth tab at the very top. So not quite there. Oh. So scroll all the way up to the top and go to functions. Here okay. you go. Yeah, and then click GraphQL. Well, yep. There you go. So that that is your function endpoint. God. I don't think it's done building yet, it's but you can go that. ahead and pop that in your steps end project. Cool. So. Now this is so this is the one thing we haven't we haven't done yet. So this is why we just went through that whole rigmarole to get to to this point because what we have done now is we have deployed our own custom GraphQL API connected to our own custom spun up database that we wow. can now feed into our steps and project. So we're not using 
Like we're not connecting to an API that's being given to us, like by Suabase. Like we actually created our own API with Redwood. You're right. And so cool. now we can pull that in build. once that's built. Yep. Published. All right, cool. Great. 404 page. So let's yeah. see if we can run is that query. that to be expected? So that is to be expected because we did not build a front end. So ah, right, right now so we are the... just accessing the serverless function. We could have created a front end with a cell that would query our back end and right. show it, but that's, that would have had another like 10 minutes. So, so this will only show on dev. This isn't going to show on production, in other words. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Okay, but cool. If you were, if you wanted to actually show someone something, you would just create a front end pretty, pretty quickly. But right now, we're only really working with the Redwood API via the serverless function. Sounds good. Okay, cool. So now saved this. Uh, I don't yeah, know. And is our things... StepZen server still running? Yeah. So we go ahead no. and do StepZen start here. And then this is where, if the the Redwood one works. I want to kick that off and just try it again. Uh, oh. What would you like to do? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you're in the wrong uh, directory. I think. Ah, good call. Uh, CD step set. Cool. There we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we did leave it to create that other thing. Cool. Yeah. All yeah, right. So Deploy. If the Redwood query works, then we can run mega query, which will be all the queries. All right, nice. So this is posts. ID title, and then did it work? Wow, awesome. cool! Yeah, God, so that's coming from from Railway through our Redwood JS API. Yeah, through steps and Netlify function. Yeah, wow, that's wild. And and I and I added that in with the Redwood admin thing and that wrote yeah, that's just there's a lot going on here. And so we also have our test. So this test data is coming from uh StepZen's mock service, correct? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um and then we also have this mock users, which is coming from just this JSON public yeah. REST uh API mm -hmm. that we can hit. We get a bunch of users back from that. We also have the Rick and Morty API here with uh, a whole bunch of characters that we can query. We get ad Educator Rick, lots of these <laughs> these characters that I don't know, uh, <laughs> familiar with some. Um, and then books, we should get the old man in the sea in here too. And the book, uh, that was one that we we wired up a Superbase. mutation with Superbase and created that mm -hmm. in this very, um, in, in the Graphical Explorer itself. We used that in the same kind of way that we used the Redwood JS admin to actually mm -hmm. create um, an item. Wow. Okay. Now, here's, here's the question. Um, is there anything nice that we can do either with GraphQL or with StepZen where um, say all of this data was more interconnected, right? Where um, I, you know, like, like I'm, I'm thinking of use cases where I have some, whoa, Cynthia, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. And uh, yeah, really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Um, so if if so I have link types together through APIs and things like that, yeah, like I've I you know like say I I have a product that's in Shopify and I want to have it so that like the content that I've written about that in Prismic is uh, linked to it uh, coming in from the Shopify API, and I also want to check my database to see how many sales we have on it or check some review service and bring that all together so that I can just request like give me information about this shoe or something um, and kind of not have to make all these different requests just pull that in with StepZen. Is that something that StepZen does or that's, that, that just GraphQL natively does but StepZen unlocks because it's giving me this one API yeah, so there's hit. a couple directives that we didn't talk about and that I included in the chat, particularly the at materializer and at sequence. So cool. this lets you actually link 
So at materializer can link types together and then at sequence lets you feed in the output of one query into the input of another query. Okay. So you can chain queries together also. So there's there are other things built in that let you do more kind of complex stuff like that. Awesome. Okay. So so that it it definitely is possible because of so like is at sequence, I think Cynthia asked it earlier. Um, is, is that sequence a, uh, step send specific thing or is that a GraphQL thing? Yeah. So all of the directives are the step send specific thing. So awesome. anytime you're writing the at symbol and then a thing and then feeding something into there, that is something step send is doing for you. Anytime cool. you're writing types or queries or mutations, you're just writing GraphQL. So the boundary between the two is, is actually pretty clear once okay. you start working with them. Got it. So that's a step send thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, because that that to me is where like, you know, our our example here is like we can get books and Rick and Morty characters and it's 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 fun, but like the power to me comes in where I have all these different services because like like I've uh, at at the agency I worked at, we had to pull in review data about this like, like about this pet food but also had to hit another api to see where that pet food was sold and like you know all all, all these different services and that's a big thing with a jam stack where you're connecting all these different things there's not like a you know there's not typically one service that handles all those different things but we had to connect all these things and it was just uh, it, it, it wasn't fun to do that as a front end developer. I wanted to focus on other things. So step Zen as a service to not only combine all of those things into one API, but also allow me to, um, through sequences. And I think you said one, one other thing, a the materializer, a, yeah, materializer, allow me to kind of combine that into one query of like, I just have to ask for like this specific pet food item. And I get back, uh, you know, the reviews for it, where it's sold, uh, you know, it, like, like it's, it's locations, how much is in stock, all, all the things that I need to display in my front end. Um, that is kind of the dream. And that, that is really, really nice that I can do that with Stepson. Yeah. And so there's just kind of one more thing I want to show with our last remaining time here. Yeah. So imagine now that everything we did, we were creating schemas, we were hooking in endpoints, we were doing that. Imagine now even all of that was already done for you. And to the point where you could just literally write a query and get stuff back. So okay. that is the steps and graph QO. Whoops, not mean. Can you delete that actually? Um, I don't know, I Ben, can we delete that? <laughs> so okay, those are not super duper important. I can roll both of those, but that was not what was supposed to be in my keyboard when I copy pasted that. that is hilarious. Um, I don't know how to do it from my little thing. Um, yeah. Ben Myers deleted the message. Ben, you are great. Mod of the year, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate you. That buddy. is by far the dumbest thing I've ever done on stream. <laughs> you'll 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 have to. Oh oh, good, good call. It's still in the thing. Uh, whoops. Cool. It's cool. it's at least off the screen below. Yeah, I would roll those again at some point. There we go. GraphQL dot steps. Can I click here? The GraphQL Studio is that? Yep, that's it. Yeah. Cool. So get started with GraphQL Studio, Ben. Thank you again. I I greatly appreciate you. Um, you'll have to teach me. I'm I'm in, in the OBS of the stream. Yeah, I'm in the OBS interface. So like right clicking didn't seem to do anything. You'll still need to re-roll, but at least harder to copy paste now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you did it. You'll, you'll, you'll have to teach me. Cool. Um, so get started with the GraphQL Studio. Create your own GraphQL API in just a few clicks. No resolvers to write. No data connector, connections to code. No servers to build. Your API runs on step zen. Okay. And so I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued, but I'm not fully uh, appreciating it yet. Is, is, is kind of the, the thing. So what should I do here? Just hit next. Yeah, so let's hit next. Okay. And then keep hitting next. All right. Yep. Build a and studio. Build a studio. Yep. All right. Yep. Cool. So what we got here is <clears throat> on the left, we have got basically all of the different in it. So hit no thanks there, actually. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. So these are all the different things that we can connect to right now. 
So wow. these are kind of pre-built integrations already that you can just like click and then and then figure out. So we're gonna start with the the Google Natural Language API. Cloud Natural Language API. Yeah, cool. Just yes. hit plus. Yeah, hit plus. And then All this right. one will need some keys, which is that's what I'd actually dropped into the the stream. So right. I just sent you a message. And then we're going to end up rolling this afterwards anyway. So I'm like, we're not taking anything off screen at this point. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Um, where am I? This is one of the nice things actually keys. about having API keys that are easy to roll. If you're working with a service that does not let you easily roll your API keys, that should be like a huge red flag because these things yes. are like really, really <laughs> easy to experience. Yeah. The review uh, all sorts of stuff, newsletter yeah. API keys are not re rollable. And I'm like, that's, that's, not, that's not good. Um, yeah, no, that's that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, where am I popping these keys? So where it says configure. Uh, yeah. So the top a... left. Oh, right, right here. Next to the name. Yeah. Cool. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then you'll just um, drop it in there. Is that gonna hide so it? So I think right now it's hiding it. So I'll cool. show it. Yeah. There you go. Will yeah. My keys be cool. secure. Just sure. just save. Don't hit create account. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, cool. so I've got a query that. To... So what is the Google Cloud Natural Language API? I'm not, I'm not even familiar with it. Yeah, sure. So um, what it is is basically Google exposing their like natural language processing ability through an API because Google has tons and tons of, like you know things like TensorFlow and like all these deep learning kind of services yeah. on their cloud. And so this is a way that you can kind of use those that needing to know how to like train a model yourself and do all that kind of stuff. Got it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so what am I, am I still going to run this or? Hold on one second. Sorry. I had to click the more. button. I couldn't, I couldn't not click the button. <laughs> what? Yeah. Let's see what it, what's it spitting out for you? So what uh, classified text? Oh, so I'm asking it to say, Hey, Google, uh, use your big brain and tell me what this text is about. Basically content, the weekend side of our hardworking hoodies with a relaxed fit and ultra spongy fabric, hundred percent cotton, French Terry, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Google comes back and Chad, there's like not a great way for me to, uh, make this big and have you see things. I can't like min minimize this side or anything. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and so read it. Grab the query I just dropped in your in your Discord messages and then run that because this is going to just show us exactly what we oh, want to see. So what I, what we Austin, I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm triggering uh, frugal homes. Got to gotta be careful. <laughs> sorry about that, Austin. That's my fault. Um, all right. So I so, sorry. I just wanted to apologize. Didn't mean to cut you off. But I did grab the query. Um, yeah. And so drop it in here or schema? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, in query. Yeah. Query. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Content. So what this is going to do is this is going to send the message saying, I feel happy. And it will let us know how happy it actually feels. Yes. So now change the word happy to sad and rerun it. This is how they become sentient. Interesting. So what it's doing is it's giving you what's called the polarity of your speech. It basically looks at the words and says how positive, it, whether it's positive or negative, and then how positive and how negative it is. I feel mad. I usually, I try, I feel exactly in the middle. Yeah, this is funny. Even is exactly neutral. I I, if, I, if I say I feel neutral, that's still somewhat positive. Yeah. I feel. So try, I feel exactly in the middle. <laughs> I, I feel, feel nothing. Not Meh that's, is that's worse negative. than nothing. Yeah. I feel nothing is pretty dark to me, but Google thinks <laughs> it's not as bad as meh. All right. So I'm, I'm learning a lot about humans and people and yeah. <laughs> Ben. <laughs> um, I, I, wait, hold on. Let's see what we got. I, all right. It's a step in the right direction. I wonder if spaces matter. Nope. Space don't matter. This is interesting. Okay. So, analyze sentiment. That's funny. The fair. Um, all right. So that's really interesting. It's still a nine. All right. That's which marks don't 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 push us to the one. Um, cool. So, 
what is special about what we just did though um like can you ex explain what's neat about this yeah so if you click over to where it says the schema now so next to query yeah so what you see here is that this is what we have been writing throughout the course of this whole episode we've been writing these graphql schemas uh... and if you keep going down to query eventually then you'll see where it's actually feeding in the endpoint itself and so this is like all of this GraphQL code that has been written for you. So if you don't want to connect your own bespoke API, you just want to deal with these services that are already known quantities, the Got schemas it. are all there for you. You don't have to write a single line of GraphQL to do this. Got it. Okay. So basically, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, and if I can, is there a way to make this part bigger? No. Um, so this is like, hey, um, you you you're almost doing like a uh, like an if this then that or a Zapier kind of thing where uh, hey these are all a bunch of very popular APIs that you might want to hit here's that integration and now you can write the queries without having to come up with with the schema itself it 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 feels like where Zapier is a no code solution. This is still a code solution, but a less code solution. Is, is that kind of accurate? Where like, I would love to integrate with Trello and Spotify, um, but I need more than what like a, a Zapier would, would give me. Um, I, I need a bit more of a like nuanced um, query or, or just I, I need to actually write some code here, but I don't want to go through the pains of actually like integrating with Spotify and assume this is going to make me go get like it. Oh, whoa. Did that just, oh, wow. Is that going to actually work? Oh, so I would, you might need a Spotify key. So that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Would, would need to configure. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to go get one. I was just clicking around, but yeah. that's no, awesome. That's cool. that, in that. Yeah. yeah. And so there was one other one that I wanted to show. So add in the dev.2 one. Dev2. Yeah. This is great though. That like, mm -hmm. all right, configure to have two API yeah. keys. Should I go grab one or you, did you drop me one? I, I dropped you one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thought I did see it in chat earlier. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, cool. And then so... I have, and then I have a query to, so for this one, basically what you do is you have a, Get comments by. So what I'm going to do is have it return comments on an article specified with the article ID, and then the reasoning for oh. that is because the goal here, what I've already kind of showed how to how to do in a, in a blog post, is that you are able to chain the query that gets you your blog comments into the yeah so. I got that before with um for for some reason I have another another one that I was testing but the comment it shows actually has a swear word in it so I don't want to have that pop up on screen on screen either right now yeah but, um, I think that's just that's just because of the the ID that we're that we're feeding it so let's see hey this is the one thing that's kind of challenging about the dev uh, API is because you need to work with with the ID specifically. Huh. Let me try and find really one of my articles that has has a comment on it already. Click what Ben dropped in chat. I have no shot. <laughs> yeah, that was it's definitely the mood there, Ben. I agree. All right, we're here. Um, interesting though. See, I thought this was like someone responding to me for hitting the API too much. Yeah, no, I think that's actually that is actually a comment. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's what I'm getting from that too. Yeah. Um, did you drop me something yet? Wasn't sure. So, yeah, so that's yeah, this is fine. This gets across the idea. So go to the the thing I just linked. I'm just gonna kind of walk since we're almost out of time. Yeah. The the next step you can do is you can then export this project and then extend it with any kind of stuff you want. So what this is, is uh, basically what we just walked through here. So yep. keep going, keep going, keep going. 
and then keep going and then where it says sequence yeah so right there and if you uh, uh, bump up your font a little bit yeah okay awesome so this is essentially taking the first query or the the get comments by article id query and then it feeds it into the get natural language analyze sentiment query and then it maps the arguments of the content to or the body html to the content so this is like so that's so yeah and so that's not going to work no yeah no because that's so this is needs to be in the schema so this is why you would need to export the project and then uh, add it in and then it. spin up steps and start to do so there is there's a slight little bit of a bit of friction there but if you scroll down a little more then you'll see there you can feed in the comment and then this is like a positive one so it's giving 0 0.8 right and then if you scroll down a little more it's that it's an article that i wrote where there are some salty comments so it has <laughs> negative 0 0.04 that's funny that's really interesting that you can yeah like use use that bit of ai to assess like which of your posts made people the most happy not just like mm -hmm. did they and also do, do people engage more with the stuff that they're angry at or the stuff that they enjoy uh, based on social media and the world today i'm willing to bet they engage more with the negative comments um no i'm not encouraging that to say like you know it's yeah. it it's very interesting what you can do with things like this but really cool that steps in allows you to do it uh in this way where you can kind of pipe one into the next and have that all surfaced in one api that's great yeah. um oh how do you add a secret eg open weather it's over on the left under config. so that was when we were doing the configure thing that we were clicking yeah exactly got it yeah so yes yeah, so that's what so. we showed with the any time you click one that needs a key you'll have a configure button next to it and then yeah. you just add it add it in there really cool so, yeah, um and then a, yeah so the pokemon one is open that... right so we can just yes. query for pokemon yeah. mm -hmm. based on Oh, deploying your endpoint that happens so quick that i barely even noticed that that was that was yeah. uh, occurring dev two queries natural language pokemon queries i just want to if you don't mind uh yeah. oh, you pokemon gotta get your pokemons i gotta gotta see how this goes cool yeah. pokemon Which abilities pokemon. pokemon pokemons snow so it gives me like all the abilities and then it gives me 10 actual pokemon the first 10 really cool and then yeah. so with with methods like uh sequence i can you know get one maybe uh put the the description of a pokemon into the google natural language and see what they think about how friendly that one is or something just exactly, there's just yeah. lots of stuff you can do here and then you can also eject this is is what you said or just... Yeah, exactly. So if you click the publish button, then it'll publish it for you. And then basically Got that it. just spits out a project that is like the one that we were creating throughout the, the first hour. Got it. Oh, and then, and then you then have these pre-built combinations. Yeah, so these are already kind of combined. So like the social media sentiment analysis is fr brings in some other kind of sentiment analysis stuff and then do currency conversions, you yeah. can do image search, you can do all sorts of stuff. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, the Twitter and Unsplash contextual image search for Twitter, Google, oh, sorry, outdoor dining search, Google Maps plus open weather plus Yelp. Really cool stuff that, yeah, has those integrations but doesn't lock you in the way like a, um, an if this, then that, or a, um, what's the other one that I kept saying? What's the no-code solution for uh, Zapier? Yeah, like, like that's what I think of when when I, I think of like combining Google Maps and Yelp you're like if if this happens then do do those things um, but this as a way to search and combine different sources of data uh, and then connecting your own as well this is so cool man yeah awesome I'm glad that you're you're enjoying it I hope yeah. that you will find use for it and possibly use it for something it would definitely be Super fun to just get to hack on some of this stuff with you Ooh, and love help you build something actually useful because this is something that like this we don't want this just to be like a theoretical project. We want people to, like actually build real useful things with this. So always always happy to get a chance to to show it off and, and show the capabilities and 
get a get a chance to you know kind of see people's reactions to it so yeah this has been really really fun if anyone has any other questions feel free to drop them in the chat but that's essentially everything that i wanted to show i didn't show uh like how to build out a front end and connect it to a steps in api but we have lots of tutorials for that as well whether it's a react front end or a view front end or a svelte front end anything that can make a fetch request can integrate with this and so, yeah, it's a really great tool as like the, the front of the back end is, is what I think of it as. People always talk about like the front of the front end and the back of the front end. This is the front of the back end. So nice. it's, a, it's a cool tool to give you access to a lot of back end powers and make you more full stack as a, as a front end dev. That's great. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Um, chat, do we have any questions? I think we've been mostly answering them as we go. I think uh, our friend Disco did has Did anyone wonder a, anything? Um, no, I did not plug it, and I didn't see anyone do that, so I apologize for not... Um, Makes sense. All good. Yeah. Nope, seems pretty seems clear. Seems pretty clear. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, it's awesome. That's good to um, hear, because this thing confused the crap out of me when I first learned Steps and it made no sense for like a month or two, and Glad I can hopefully make it a little more um, comprehensible to people. Cynthia says it's great. It's awesome. Disco, are you still here by chance? Because maybe we can take that um, one offline. Don't want to. Yeah, it's not like he was asking about money things. So yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to be the best person. On that. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, starting to do a share of profits. It seems like, honestly, Disco, uh, this is unfortunately a. Uh, a lawyer thing, especially if there's real money involved. Um, yeah, you yeah, should talk to a legal expert. Made me around 2.5 like mil. Yeah, he's had around 250,000. Yeah, like, if there's this much money involved, it's not going to, I'm, I'm, it's going to be tough, tough for, for me to say. It's, it's going to come down mainly to lawyers and proof, unfortunately. And I know that's not fun, but. Um, definitely just reading a summary on, on, on a stream. I'm not gonna be able to give a, uh, thorough answer that's going to hold up in court or anything. So sorry. Sorry that you're going Alex through something Trost like that. Alex told me. I mean, yeah, uh, it's actually <laughs> mine is what it is. <laughs> I own half the shares. Um, no, but Anthony, this was really cool. Uh, thank you to chat. You, you were all fantastic. Really appreciated the questions and just the, the uh yeah just having having you you all here and ben thank you for uh saving our butts with that quick yeah, deletion you yeah. are you're a top top pro uh again thank you uh and folks this is in case uh in case you, you didn't hear me say it before the last stream of the year and uh i just want to say wow it has been a phenomenal phenomenal year uh we started really streaming in february we haven't even been streaming uh, here for like a full year for real. Like we, we did a couple of streams uh, the, the the year before, but but not not really. Um, so I just want to say like thank you so much for everything, for showing up and for uh, being supportive, for asking questions, and for all this stuff. It's been made it to the end of the last stream. I'm it. Great to see you, my friend, and be one mind, Brent. Great to see you. Um, so yeah, like thank you for a phenomenal year. Thank you for uh showing up and anthony for 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 the people like anthony like amit like everyone else who's come on like ben uh who's actually given us their time and uh their energy and taught us a ton this year we've had a lot of episodes um and yeah just really want to say thank you for an awesome year we will be back in january thank you for uh, hosting and for putting it all together and doing the thing so of course the man, of community course. very much appreciates you Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's honestly been a joy. Did not um, did not expect all of this coming into the new year. Came into a new job and stream kind of. Oh, yeah, we, we we can mess around with the stream, and then seemed like we needed a Discord, and it's just been this uh, incredible community thing that ended the year with uh, us us as a community doing a good thing for the world. So it's just I'm I'm excited to see what happens next year, um, and just appreciate all of you. So. Uh, hope everyone out there has a wonderful holiday, a wonderful new year. Whoa, Ben, thank you so much for those gifted subs. Really appreciate you. Um, so, so kind, my friend. So, super, super generous. Uh, thank you so much. But yeah, hope everyone has a phenomenal holiday um, and a great new year. I'll see you in 2022. And if you're not in the Discord, 
I would love to see you before then. So join the Discord. Uh, let me see if I have the button here. I do. That's that's the Discord. So there's the button. Um, thank you so much. And uh, Anthony, you want to plug anything before we head out? Oh, um, I mean, stepsend.com for stepsend stuff, uh, redwoodjs.com for redwood stuff. And then um, I would be remiss not to mention fsjam.org. This is my podcast. We've had the great Alex Trost as a guest along with Ben and other people. I uh, had Cassie Evans just very, very recently. So fsjam.org is my podcast that I've been doing with Christopher Burns um, for over a year now. Actually, we started October of, of last year. So we're about a year and two months into it. We've got about 60 episodes right now. And um, yeah, that's like very, very fun, fulfilling thing for me yeah, to do. And on that. We have lots of conversations with lots of like, we've had people from Superbase, like a lot of the tech we've shown here, we've had people talk about all this, so all this kind of stuff that, that we're looking at. If, if this interests you, if you think that these projects are cool and you want to learn more, it's a, it's a really great resource to dig into like this huge cornucopia of stuff that, that we've looked at today. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely check out FSJM and uh, yeah. It, you were both so much fun to talk to, so I really appreciate it. Uh, and awesome. Cynthia says she's going to check it out. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Um, so, folks, that's it. Hope you have a great day, and we will see you later. Take care. Let's find someone to raid. Uh, let's go drop by there and have a great new year. Bye.